In the early 20th century, stoneware was a necessity in every kitchen. A wide array of foods were packaged in stoneware, including cheese, butter, fruit, and meats. There were no plastic containers to store food. I can remember as a kid walking into a grocery store here in town, and they would have a large 20-gallon uh, crock sitting there with dill pickles in it. Most cooking was done in iron pots or a stoneware vessel, such as a bean pot. Here she's applying a piece of clay into the handle. This whole process is known as hand jiggering and has been done this way for over a hundred years. Uh, she takes a plaster mold, places it in a wheel, works on the handle area, applies a quantity of clay into the mold, and uh, pulls down a hand jiggering tool. We had tried several materials in the past, and wood, hard wood, seems to work the best. And the secret is getting the clay to, to roll. She now adds some water to the, to the inside, which causes the clay to smooth out. She trims off the top of the mold. And that piece is, uh, maybe takes up a little of the excess moisture. Smooths out more of the inside. Also, liquors and wines were packaged in stoneware. These are going to be a four-fifths jug. The jug is made in two pieces uh, at the same time into a plaster mold. We're using a mechanically operated wood jiggering tool. Also there is a wood scrapper that comes down and scraps. Then the two plaster molds are manually put together and set to dry. Once dried, the mold can be pulled apart. The excess clay is pulled off the now connected jug. Next, the neck is cut to make an opening in the top. A forming piece is then inserted to make the mouth circular. It is then smoothed to even out any imperfections. A length of clay is then attached. This clay is hand pulled to make the handle of the jug. What amazed me was that you could tell if two different people had done it, these all pretty much look identical. Then we do what is referred to as a pump and dip. The jug is uh, inverted and hand pumped on the inside to get glazed material inside. It is then lowered down into brown glaze or what other, whatever color you want to use and then swirled around so that there's uh, an even coating. They'll let this set for four to five hours and then they will uh, wax the bottom ring and then put this glaze down in a transparent glaze so that it will actually be a brown and buff color. Once this is, is done, the jug sets again from, from four to eight hours. Later, we can imprint with a rubber stamp, or uh, if it needs to be decorated in any fashion, we can do that. In stoneware, you can't, you can speed up the process a little bit, but you have to be extremely careful that you don't over dry too soon. Uh, what will happen then is that you'll, you'll end up cracking the piece. The jug is then finally ready for its transformation, the kiln. The the process then is to place the jug on a kill plate. Our current kill firing is about 
uh, six hours and 45 minutes. It reaches a temperature of uh, 2,250 degrees Fahrenheit. The process of putting the jugs in the kiln is called firing. Firing will turn the glaze into a glass-like outer shell. This shell will protect the clay from touching the jug's contents and make it easier to clean. After the kiln shuts off, it will take approximately five to six hours to cool down. The jugs are then unloaded, packed, and then shipped. Most farmers uh, around here, uh, before the advent of a, of a, a good thermos, would take that uh, crock and wrap it in burlap and then uh, wet the, the burlap and as it, it uh, evaporated, it would keep the uh, water cool on the inside. But uh, those jugs have been around for well over a hundred years. And this is the same process. Our, our manufacturer is the same process. By 1924, the stoneware line consisted of over 225 different kinds and sizes of containers. Costs began to rise and changes began to occur in habits and the way people lived their lives. It was an ongoing process because with the advent of glass containers and plastic containers and aluminum cans and freezers and different ways of preserving food that took away a lot of the pottery so the potteries wound up making artware which is fancy vases and you know pictures and so forth and they developed a huge artware line and dinnerware and then they, they had huge contracts with the cheese makers out of Wisconsin and they make cheese jars those contracts are of course were real competitive I mean they kept the plant going but then they'd, along had come a big fire and they'd have to rebuild and just financial and constant rebuilding and burning and they finally ran out of money. The pure food laws caused a decline in the open container business and prohibition caused a decline in the jug business. But over time other types of materials were developed and uh, they made stoneware and earthenware pottery uh, less efficient, other things were cheaper to produce and more useful in the marketplace. During the 1940s and 50s, the appreciation for stoneware seemed to decline and Western hit another low. During this time, it was a battle for survival. 